His conscience cleared, Gazan went before the House Un-American Activities Committee for a second time. In a prepared statement, Gazan told the committee the names of each person who had been in the party with him 16 years earlier. Morris Karnovsky, Phoebe Brand, Louis Leverett, Tony Kraber, Art Smith, Paula Strasberg, Clifford Odets, and J. Edward Bromberg. Kazan then went on to name the party officials who had put him on trial, as well as others he knew to be communists. In total, Kazan named 17 people. All had been named before, and all had been blacklisted. In Kazan's mind, this tempered what he had done. He was not giving the committee anything it didn't already have. But most people in Hollywood and on Broadway saw it differently. Kazan was a big feather in their cap. He was that important. Because uh, what the committee was after wasn't the names that they wanted you to give. They had all the names. They wanted your name. That was what was important. They wanted to be able to say, we have Ilya Kazan on our side. You know, he's uh, collaborating with us. It was not a matter of whether they had been named before or whether this would affect them in terms of the blacklist. What, what mattered was that he was validating the committee by naming names and cooperating with them. He was saying, you have a right to do this. I am on your side. Go ahead, do more of it. Kazan's testimony devastated many of his friends and immediately made him a pariah. For these people, Kazan's actions were unforgivable, not only because he had named names, but because Kazan was one of the few people who could have kept working. Sure, he would have been blacklisted in Hollywood, but on Broadway, there was no blacklist. He always had the theater. Kazan didn't help his case. Two days after his testimony, he took out an ad in the New York Times. In it, he defended his actions and called for others also to name names. There was no hint of the angst, the self-doubt that had racked Kazan for months. The public face he put forward was assured, without remorse. Everyone abandoned him. His secretary quit. The actor's studio rose in revolt. Old friends cut him off. I think his second testimony changed his life almost totally. The impact was enormous with the whole, entire theater community and, and Hollywood community, but the theater community in particular. They felt he'd betrayed them. Everybody felt that way, and they all felt he'd done it for, for, uh, for, for, for his work. I mean, that he didn't want to lose that in Hollywood. He'd done it for money. Um, he was, uh, it, was, it was just devastating. 